Hello. Uh, so I founded List seven years ago because we saw a trend happening in the US. Ah, a trend happening in the US around inspiration. So more and more people were getting inspired to buy items that they saw from local influencers or celebrities through Instagram or Snapchat or YouTube. And they had a problem that once they fell in love with the shoe, the sweater, the trend, where could they get it? The challenge they had is that fashion is incredibly fragmented online. It's a huge market of 250 billion, but all the reasons that Bezos chose to start Amazon with the book is opposite for fashion, particularly luxury and contemporary fashion, which is our core. You know, these items are very expensive and very seasonal. So within six months, you've lost your margin, which means stores, by definition, are quite small. And so the reason that Lyft exists is we bring together all of these different boutiques or department stores or pure play e-tailers, uh, you know, the brands directly, tens of thousands into one place so that customers can find exactly what they're looking for. Our shopper tends to be in the cities, so New York, London, LA, Paris, Hong Kong, uh, digitally native, quite affluent. The one thing she doesn't have is time. She doesn't have time to go through all these stores. Once she's fallen in love with something, she wants to have it straight away. So she comes to Lyft so she, because she can shop everything in one place. We structure the data. We have a large team of data scientists making sure that we know everything about all of these 4 million products, which is the largest inventory in luxury contemporary uh, fashion around the world. These cover you know, many of the, the most uh, prestigious luxury and contemporary brands, also a few uh, high street brands as well. And then through the metadata we have on the products, we allow customers to search. They can filter you know, in innovative different ways to find exactly what they're looking for. And once she finds that thing, we try to provide as much information as possible to the customer. You know, this could include uh, you know, styling uh, images as well as any other data to make sure that she makes the best decision. So when we look at uh, others in the space, sometimes people say, well, how are you different to a net -a -porte? You know, net -a porte are a partner of ours and have been for, for seven years. You know, they have a wonderfully strong brand, uh, strong edit, strong curation, and people go there to fall in love with items. They don't know what they want. They see a beautiful range. And so net -a porte can have an inventory of 10,000 items and create a wonderful shopping experience. We have a very different dynamic. We service customers who know what they want. You know, there are 60 or 70 million fashion searches every day in the US. We want to be uh, helping those customers as much as possible. You know, Amazon doesn't have the coverage in luxury and contemporary fashion. So LVMH, who are investors in our business, have said very publicly that they will never uh, sell on Amazon. And then you know, with Google, they have all the strengths uh, and challenges of horizontal search. And finally, with Pinterest, again, it's very much discovery driven. So as, as uh, Marco said, we think uh, a lot about vertical search with uh, data as leading the vertical. And what we've seen with Travago or Booking.com do in travel or Skyscanner even, what Seamless or Just Eat or Grubhub or Deliveroo are doing in, in the restaurant space. You know, again, this is a, a story we've seen again and again. And these businesses in these different verticals can be very, very meaningful. And so the, the aim that we have is to build a similarly meaningful business within fashion. So to give you a snapshot of where we are, last year we did 215 million in sales. We'll do north of 300 this year. Again, the largest inventory at about 4 million items from around the world, 65 million shoppers, and uh, an AOV of 250. And that ranges from people spending $20,000 on beautiful embroidered capes down to $20 on maybe uh, an ASOS dress. So customers love the utility of what we provide. So 60% of our sales comes from people who've already been there the previous month. And then if we look at just the top 10 customers, who obviously we love uh, dearly, uh, on average, each of them placed 69 orders a year uh, last year, so 1.3 orders every week. Each of those orders was $1,400 as AOV. So uh, you know, some of them are stylists who are shopping from the clients. Uh, one of them is an actress in Hollywood uh, you know, who, again, she knows exactly what she wants, and she um, comes to us because we can get it for her in the best way. So the business has been growing uh, very quickly, you know, north of 100% uh, annual growth rate over the last four years. And also, uh, the profitability uh, has been growing similarly quickly. So right now, the business, we sort of run at, uh, around break-even which is uh, something we're very proud of. 
and a lot of the engine behind that profitability has come from um, paid search. So we will get three times our spend at the end of the first month back. Uh, and again, I think some of you will have heard Booking.com talk yesterday. You know, they spend three billion on paid search. Obviously, we don't spend anywhere close to that uh, today. But a lot of their strategy has been on um, you know, long-tail paid search, and this is, again, very important and meaningful for us. Because we have the largest inventory, we can do things at the long tail that others can't do. So we will bid on something like black Gucci dress, and people who are searching for that know exactly what they want, and then when they come to list, we have the largest selection of black Gucci dresses, and that uh, drives uh, a lot of the profitability. So most of our business is in the US, which is the most competitive market when it comes to customer acquisition. And our acquisition cost in the, in globally is, uh, is $6, which, again, we're very, very proud of. Um, so this is the geographic split. We're thinking about, uh, you know, we, we're a European business. We started in London, but the US was the first market we went into. Again, they had the most fragmentation. They had the most uh, inspiration, let's say. Uh, and now, when we look at Europe and we look at Asia, a lot of these markets are much more developed. You know, I think uh, we heard just now how, how Farfetch have been growing a lot in the Asian markets, for example. And, you know, we partner with Farfetch, and we would ask, you know, how can we serve the Asian consumer better? How can we serve the European consumer? Uh, and so this will be a key focus for us in, uh, in the year ahead. Um, so that is most of the, the last seven years. I think the story wouldn't be complete with a, a shout out to the investors who've supported us on the way. So Excel, who led the seed round and have uh, grown their stake in every round that we've done, have been great supporters. And then uh, last round we did uh, a $40 million round a couple of years ago. We had uh, LVMH uh, through, the, through their controlling shareholder join, uh, which is the first strategic investor who's been a great help as well. So a uh, big thanks to, to them. So that was the last seven years. I uh, hope to see you next time. Thank you.